All right, welcome back again, guys, for another episode of The Daily Show. And this episode is for Tuesday, August 17. Um, some of the things we'll be talking about today will be, obviously, the observances. Uh, for today's observance, we'll talk about things that are very specific, you know, a uh, specific type of stuff. So um, stay tuned. We're going to be uh, doing it right now. Um, and then for our history, we'll talk about the uh, Woodstock Music Festival. Then... Um, we have a new place of the week now, Botswana, introduced by Liz yesterday. Um, and as usual, we have our specific themes also when it comes to the stuff of the day from animal of the day to the uh, tech trivia. So let's go on ahead and start. So I did say for today's observances, we have all of our observances that we'll be talking about today are specific. Too specific <laughs> so let's go ahead first one not just your ordinary cats not just cats in general but black cat today is black cat appreciation day um, today instead of being scared of him we should be celebrating them instead um, black cat appreciation day is a day to remember black cats who have many times been given a bad association in life um, in many cultures, black cats are looked down, looked on with superstition and are thought to carry bad omens. Um, this is the case in most Europe and in the, here in the United States too. Um, if a black cat walks in front of you, it, it is thought that uh, misfortune will come. Also, black cats have been associated with witches, you know, and some people believe that they also are shape-shifting animals, or it could be just witches themselves. Um, to make matters worse, black cats were also even associated with devils or devil worship, you know, back in the day, which unfortunately uh, caused other people or, you know, the people back in the day hunt them, to hunt them, to hunt them down. Uh, which made the whole bubonic plague worse because there were not enough cats to hunt the rats which are respons responsible for spreading the plague in the first place, you know? So, back in the day, especially when the bu uh, bubonic plague uh, bubonic plague, I'm sorry, I'm kind of stuttering right now uh, when the bubonic plague uh, happened uh, People, the people were kind of hunting the wrong animal or the wrong cause, uh, which actually made matters worse because you know the cats, they were actually helping out in hunting these these uh, rats. But no, we had to hunt them, so uh, that wasn't a good move. Um, however, though there are some countries where black cats are seen as good luck, uh, such as Great Britain and Japan. And they have also been thought of or to bring good luck on some ships as the uh, ship's cat. But the overwhelming belief has been that black cats are no good. Yeah, I, I feel bad for them. Um, and because of that, unfortunately, they have been neglected and it takes longer for black cats to be adopted from shelters because, again, superstitious belief, you know, or superstition. Um, for me, I grew up learning about those negative superstition too. Superstitions, there's a lot of them. Um, but I personally never got scared of them, you know. Um, in fact, while, while I was growing up, I find these cats to be generally friendly and playful. Uh, just like basically any other cats, you know what I'm saying? Um, now that we know black cats are not evil, I hope this observance helped other people too convince that they're, they're just as friendly as... Uh, as uh, other cats <laughs> um, what about you guys are you guys uh, scared of black cats or do you did you used to have a pet uh, a black cat as a pet before let me know in the comment section below um, I don't know it, it, this one is like it resembles a uh, black panther for me you know like those um, black panthers in the jungle uh, it's just that this one is more domesticated, but at least you get the look. So I don't know. It, it looks it looks elegant to me. Next up, another specific type of observance, not just your regular pencil, but uh, number two, number two pencil. Um, 
So if you have any pencils at home, check your check your pencils if they have a number two right there. And uh, that's today is gonna be your pencil's observance if it has number two. Um, the number two pencil or its equivalent is one of the most common pencils in the world. Numbers are used to classify grades of pencils in the United States, while both numbers and letters in what uh, may be called the HB, uh, graphite grading scale, are used to classify pencils in the rest of the world. A number two pencil is towards the middle when it comes to the hardness of lead or the graphite and the darkness of the shade. Um, if a pencil has a higher number or a number higher than number two or two and a half or three, it means it has a harder graphite core, a harder point, and a lighter shade. Uh, these pencils are often used by engineers or architects. If it has a number lower than two, uh, it means it has a softer graphite core, a softer point, and a darker shade. So there is a lower proportion of clay in the graphite and more of the graphite is left on the paper. That's why it's darker. Uh, these pencils are often used by artists, you know, especially making shadows and, and shades um, because they help them make a wider spectrum of tones. Outside of the U.S., um, an H, you know, sometimes if you check your pencil, it's going to say H or HB, you know, it's used to indicate the hard pencil, while B is used to indicate uh, the pencil with a blacker shade, darker shade, you know. Towards the middle of the scale is the HB pencil, which is similar to a number two pencil. And then, I don't know if you guys saw a pencil that is also an F, or it has the marking F right there. Uh, that is also near in the middle. And uh, this letter indicates that the pencil sharpens to a fine point. Um, I know some of you guys would be preferring a finer uh markings you know for for regular pens that is uh but pencils also do have uh, uh, a fine point the hb graphite grading scales or scale goes to hb all right so in order it's gonna be hb to b and then 2b 3b and so on and so forth uh in just in one direction and then from there's gonna be hb to f to h the 2H and 3H and again so on and so forth so uh, let me know if you guys have a number two pencil again this observance like I said all the observance we'll be talking about today uh, they're gonna be very specific you know the number two pencil maybe that's something you can use to draw a black cat yeah, just to connect these observance and uh, if you're done drawing your black cat. Maybe you wanted to go to a store, but not just again your, uh, not just any stores, but a thrift store right there. So today, the third major observance we'll we'll be talking about today is the National Thrift Store Shop Day or Thrift Shop. Um, I think I did say a thrift store, but I mean you know a shop, a store. So Thrift Shop Day is dedicated to thrift shops, the uh, resale shops that uh, more often than not are connected to a charity organization. Um, while some resale shops are for for profit businesses such as buy outright or consignment stores, most thrift shops have received their goods as donations and donate to um, or are a charity organization. So what are the things you would find in a thrift shop or thrift store? Uh, I mean clothes, that's for sure, you know. Um, some other things aside from clothing would be DVDs, CDs, you know, they would have like a uh, sale for, for them, just probably like a dollar per DVDs. Books, they also sell books. Um, a little bit of electronics here and there, but I had my... Um, personal experience of getting electronics or buying electronics from a thrift shop and uh, it, it, it wasn't working when I got home you know and apparently that thrift shop uh, didn't let me kind of uh, try it in the store you know like because it it has a power plug and all I have to do is like plug it in a power to see if it would work and they say 
they said they um, it wasn't allowed in their store. So, yeah. Um, what else? Furnitures. Furnitures. Um, some of them are also uh, selling some uh, furnitures, starting from like a smaller ones to actual like bigger furniture. So, yeah. Not all thrift shop. Uh, not all thrift shops. <laughs> It's kind of hard for me to pronounce that. Um, not all of them uh, are selling the same thing. That's, um, I guess, that's part of a thrill. If you would go to a thrift shop, is to kind of find something interesting um, when you go around. Uh, people shop at thrift shops for various reasons, whether it be for the low prices, uh, support the charity, or for environmental and ethical reasons such as recycling. Because instead of you buying new ones, uh, you can buy the donated ones, you know. Um, so basically, people love going to thrift shop. And can I ask you if you are fond of going to thrift shops? Maybe just to, I don't know, window shop or looking for some interesting things and then you happen to decide to buy it. Anyways, um, my wife, for one, loves going to thrift shops. And she loves the feeling, or she loves feeling the thrill of finding something that she would find good or useful. And basically, she calls her activity treasure hunt, you know, <laughs> treasure hunt right there. So you go to a thrift shop and see what they have, and maybe you'll find some sort of a treasure. Uh, believe it or not, she would find some branded jeans or signature bags and stuff like that, which uh, she would get for for a significantly low price and she's happy she she would consider those treasures so yeah uh for me though <laughs> okay well it's not like i hate thrift shops i guess because of my experience of the uh what do you call this uh, of the some of the electronics i bought from there i don't hate them it's just it's not my thing generally um see the thing for me is when i go to a store i already know what i would buy um, I, I would check it online first and actually see if um, if the item I'm looking for is available to uh, a store in this specific location. So let's say uh, if I go to Best Buy or Micro Center or I don't know Walmart, Target, or uh, where else? Yeah, those kinds of stores, for example. Um, all I'll do would be just to go to a specific section where that item is and uh, grab it from there and then just just leave, you know. Um, but sometimes I like hanging around the uh, hanging around the, a, a store like Best Buy for example just to try out their new electronics and stuff. Um, but if I would go to a thrift shop, it would be something just as an emergency, if ever. Or maybe not just an emergency. Um, I guess if my wife asks me to go with her. <laughs> so yeah, I'll, I'll, go with, I'll be going to a thrift shop. The thing about thrift shops is that they won't... It's not like... Uh, it's not common for them to have a, to have a website of... Of their inventory you know if you want to know what they have you have to go to the actual store and then check what they have and uh, it's like I said it's not my thing um, I'm not good <laughs> I'm not good at like going around and check stuff I mean I would if if that's something of my interest like laptops or or uh, uh, computer parts or gaming consoles or games you know and then yeah sometimes Thrift shops would carry those electronics. The only thing is, uh, it doesn't have the the warranty that um, specific stores will have. So uh, you're taking a risk. You're taking a risk when you get some electronics from a thrift shop. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know. But of course, clothes. I mean, you know, you can always wash them uh, before you wear them after buying them from from a thrift shop. So, so what about you guys? <laughs> I've been I've been talking about. Uh, what I feel about thrift shops. What about you? Uh, do you guys like going to a thrift shop? What is your favorite thrift shop and how far is your thrift shop from your home? Let me know comment section below and then we also have some other notable observances for today aside from those three main things we talked about National I love my feet day Don't you don't you guys just love your feet? I love my feet. Everyone should love their feet, you know 
Next one, National Nonprofit Day. I'm talking about uh, some of these thrift stores or thrift shops. Uh, some of them are nonprofit, but some of them are also for profit. The third one, Balloon Airmail Day. Wow, I mean, this is probably back in the day, but I don't think it's gonna be a convenient way to do uh, mail. But yeah, Balloon Airmail right there. And then the last one, we have the uh, National Vanilla Custard Day. Wow. So we, we got one food today. It's kind of weird because so far most of the um, Daily Show episodes that we have, we're going to have at least two, three, or even more food-related observances. But for today, I only got one. Custard. And it's vanilla. So it's also specific, by the way. There you go. Uh, moving on to Today in History. I did mention something about a concert. Here we go. Today in history, 1969, we have uh, Woodstock Music Festival concluded or concludes um, the grooviest event in music history. The Woodstock Music and Art Fair uh, draws to a close after three days of peace, love, and rock and roll in upstate New York. Whoa, rock and roll. Conceived as Three Days of Peace and Music, the Woodstock was a product of a partnership between John Roberts, Joel Rosenman, and um, Artie Cornfield and Michael Lang. Their idea was to make enough money from the event to build a recording studio near the Artie New York town of Woodstock. Uh, when they couldn't find an appropriate venue in the town itself, the uh, promoters decided to hold uh, the festival on a 600-acre dairy, dairy farm in Bethel, New York, uh, some 50 miles from Woodstock, owned by Max Yasger. Um, by the time the weekend of the festival arrived, the uh, group has sold a total of 186,000 tickets and expected no more than 200,000 people to show up. By Friday night, however, uh, thousands of eager Early arrivals were pushing against the entrance gate and uh, fearing they could not control the crowd, the promoters made a decision to open the concert to everyone free of charge. Oh, wow. Um, I haven't been to a lot of concert. Uh, I do have a concert that I'll be going to with my wife on my birthday on November. And, you know, our students already know who whose concert will it be. Um, but yeah, I haven't really been to a lot of concert. I, I wish I had been in uh, in a free concert. <laughs> I wanted to go to a free concert without to pay for it. Just I don't know, buy buy some or or grab some water, making sure you're hydrated because you'll be you're probably gonna be dancing, you know, and enjoying the music. You're just gonna be feeling the vibe. Uh, let's see. So. Um, close to half a million people attended Woodstock, so they were just expecting 200,000. Well, there's like almost 500,000. Jamming the roads around Bethel with 8 miles of traffic. Ah, oh, 8 miles of traffic. Um, I don't like traffic uh, or tight traffic flow or heavy traffic flow. I don't like that. No, I call it congested. If the flow of traffic is heavy, I call it the road is congested or something. Anyways, a 25th anniversary celebration of Woodstock took place in 1994. Again, the, um, the first one, or the, not first one, but uh, the one we're talking about right now, 1969, and then 25 years after, uh, 1994, uh, still in New York, uh, known as Woodstock 2, uh, the concert featured Bob Dylan. So in 1994, they already featured Bob Dylan um, and Crosby. Stills and Nash, as well as uh, newer acts such as Nine Inch Nails and Green Day. Back in the day, Green Day is just starting, or start, I mean, starting to become famous. Uh, held over another rainy, muddy weekend, the event drew an estimated 300,000 people. Well, I guess this time they they didn't offer it for free, <laughs> so there were just less people. Plus, it was raining too, and then. Uh, they were expecting a uh, 50th anniversary festival. It was planned 2019. Unfortunately, it never happened. So, yeah, but it, if it happened, then yeah, that would be cool. You got three concerts for for Woodstock. It's awesome. 
Alrighty, notable figure born today, we have Mr. De Niro. Robert De Niro, 1943. American actor, you should have seen at least one of his movies by now. Uh, he has a lot of movies that um, he was involved with. Um, but one of the most notable ones uh, is his role, including young Vito Corleone in The Godfather Part 2. Well, again, well, it is part two, right? But still, with The Godfather, a lot of people will say uh, the, the original, the first Godfather is the best. Well, we're not here to uh, argue about that. A role for which, by the way, he won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. And then he is also highly regarded for his role in the 1990 crime film Goodfellas. There you go. Aside from that, though, he has more. So I'll be asking you uh what movie do you remember or what's your favorite movie which uh robert de niro starred that starred in and then another actor another notable figure born today which is another actor sean penn 1960 um fam famously known for his uh works uh, fast times at richmond high that was in 1982 dead man walking 1995 uh, Mystic River 2003 and Milk 2008 So happy birthday to our notable uh, figures today uh, Mr. Robert De Niro and Mr. Sean Penn There you go Alright, place of the week we have Botswana and since this is a Tuesday episode we'll talk about the national symbol um, First we got the zebra right here the zebra became the symbol of Botswana because it is considered to be neutral in so far as tribal symbols go. And secondly, because its black and white colors are in consonance with the colors of the flag. Because if you check out the flag of um, Botswana, you'll see in the middle there's going to be a stripe of white, black, white. Um, I think Liz showed the country's flag yesterday. So, if you haven't seen it, I would advise you guys to uh, check Liz's episode yesterday. Um, we have three, as far as the animal itself, we have three species of zebras, uh, which are all native to Africa. The plains zebra, the grevis or grevis zebra, and the mountain zebra. Um, they are closely related to horse, horses. Uh, zebras have thick bodies, thin legs, a tufted tail and a long head and neck sporting a short mane right there you see it in the picture and of course their most famous feature is their brilliant black and white striped coat right there i mean you know <laughs> so speaking of their stripes uh why do zebras have stripes well scientists theorize that their stripes perhaps serve to dazzle and confuse predators and biting insects or to uh, control the animal's body heat. Because each individual's stripes are unique, uh, their stripes may also have a social purpose, helping zebras to recognize one another. And then moving on to the country's uh, national flower, which also has fruit, it's called the uh, Kalahari Devil's Claw. Nah, that uh, name has uh, reason why i mean they have a reason why they named it uh the devil's claw but yes this is the national flower of botswana um the flower got its name from the tiny hooks that covers the fruit now you see the flower in the picture so the one a little bit behind it the uh, the one that kind of looks like this uh that is what resembles the devil's claw and uh ironically you know when you say like the devil's claw it kind of sounds bad right but uh, in history, Devil's Claw has been used to treat pain, liver, and kidney problems, even fever. Um, oh, and malar oh, malaria. <laughs> malaria. There you go. It has also been used in ointments to seal or to heal sores, boils, and other skin problems. Um, due to the strong thorns covering its seed, uh, this flower is said to symbolize the strength and tenacity of the nation of Botswana. So it also obviously uh, is representing something that would reflect the, uh, the the identity of the country Botswana. 
Next, we have this interesting traditional game. It's called the uh, Mora Baraba. Oh, did I say that right? No, um, let me say it again. Mora Baraba. There you go. I kind of had a mistake on where, uh, where, where I was supposed to put the stress on. So let me say it again. Uh, Mora Baraba. That's their uh, traditional board game, you know. Mora Baraba is a traditional two-player strategy board game played in South Africa and Botswana with a slightly different variations played in Lesotho. Um, the game is played kind of similar to a tic-tac-toe and it's very interesting and fun. Um, I haven't played it but I read how or I researched how it's played and yes, I mean, I, I, I can't say it's, you know, that it's kind of similar to tic-tac-toe if I haven't uh, checked on uh, how it's, you know, the rules and regulation of how you play it, the mechanics of the game. So, how, how do you play how do you play this, you ask? Well, uh, each player has 12 tokens to start with, and then players take turns placing tokens on the board uh, one by one, um, you know, right where the circles are. The goal of the game is to form a line of three tokens, like tic-tac-toe, right? Uh, that means, as a player, you may block your opponent from doing so, or you should try it uh, before your opponent uh, gets to uh, form its line. Once a player forms a line, then the player can take a capture or take or capture a token of the other player. Um, and then, you know, eventually the board will, uh, will be filled with tokens. So when there's nowhere left to go, the players can start moving the tokens on the board around. But here's the catch, here's the catch. Um, the players can only move each other's or, or the players can only move to each other's spots if it would create a line of three tokens. If not, then that move will be invalid. Now the end game is uh, whoever collects 10 tokens from capturing, capturing your opponent's tokens, you know. Whoever gets 10 tokens from your opponent's first wins. There you go. So... This is kind of like a, a level up version of uh, tic-tac-toe. First, instead of just a 9x9 nine nine, uh, area, you got more. You see in the picture right there? And the ones, the donut shapes that they're using, those are called tokens. But there are other shaped tokens. But the uh, concept of the board is pretty much the same. Right there. And that's what we have for Botswana. Um, again, I like the Mora Baraba. It's a very interesting game. Maybe uh, once we open back up, uh, we can play this. You know, uh, it's interesting. All right, stop of the day. Disney Animal we have. Sorry, with our Animal of the Day Disney version, we have, uh, I forgot his name. I was the one who made the slide, but I forgot. But we're going to be talking about Black Panther. Uh, his name is Bagheera. There you go. Bagheera, he's a friend, mentor, and protector of Mowgli. You guys know from which... Uh, this the animated film Mowgli is and Bagheera Jungle Book just in case you didn't know spoiler yeah it's Jungle Book um, so Bagheera in real life is a type of Black Panther which oh I clicked wrong one, which is not this <laughs> Black Panther I'm just saying but uh, I kind of want to put it out there because it's you know I mean Marvel's under Disney now so I guess there's there are two Black Panthers in the Disney Universe now, yeah, but um, the picture, the real picture of a Black Panther is right there. There you go. Black Panthers like Bagheera are not a distinct species, so there's they really don't have any difference between uh, the the Black Panthers and the uh, Jaguars or or Leopard. The term Black Panther or even just a Panther is a blanket term. So, if someone asks you what the difference is between the a panther and a jaguar or leopard, well, there's really no difference, you know. You can call both the jaguar and the panther, or jaguar and the panther, you can call both the jaguar and the leopard uh, panthers. Yeah, I mean, their scientific name is Pantera, so yeah, there you go. Oh, oh no, I made a mistake, we're not done yet, <laughs> sorry, here we go. I've been making some mistakes lately, guys. Well, not really some. A lot of mistakes lately. I do apologize. Um, 
Black Panthers, going back to our animal of the day, they are also great swimmers and are one of the strongest tree climbing cats. Um, it shouldn't be a surprise by now since uh, we have few episodes that we talked about big cats, you know, like jaguars, um, leopards. I believe I, I made an episode about leopards, so yeah, there you go. But again, they don't have any difference. Um, Black Panthers also have good hearing. They are extremely good. Uh, they have extremely good eyesight and a strong jaw. Um, the Black Panther is often called the ghost of the forest. It is smart, stealth-like attacker and its dark coat helps it hide and stalk prey very easily, especially at night. You know? uh, as far as the lifespan, this big cat's lifespan is between 12 to 17 years. Alright, moving on to our plan of the day because uh, the, our plan of the day is so excited to show up. We got the Lantana or Lantana. Yeah, Lantana right here. If you want butterflies and hummingbirds, consider this annual addition to your garden. This flower is a mounding plant that is heat tolerant, meaning you can set it and then forget it. Yeah. But of course, uh, don't forget it. You still have to watch out, uh, watch out for it and uh, make sure you take care of it. It's, it's just the phrase. Uh, it can also be coaxed to trail if planted in a hanging basket, uh, container, or window box. Prune, bo or prune back the blooms after the first flowering to keep the plant's shape and encourage another round of buds. There you go. They're very vibrant colors too. Oh my gosh. Seriously, I apologize for kind of stuttering today. But I'll do my best because we're almost there, guys. We're almost there. Musical artist of the day right here. Whitney Houston. All month, we're going to be talking about Whitney Houston. Um, next song that we'll be talking about is I Have Nothing. I mean, we have something, but that's the title of the song. Uh, I Have Nothing is a song released as the third single from the Bodyguard original soundtrack um, on February 1993 by still Ar Arista Records. Yeah. Um, the song was written by David Foster and Linda Thompson and produced by Foster. After the back-to-back uh, -back success of uh, Houston's I Will Always Love You and I'm Every Woman, uh, spoiler alert, we might talk about I'm Every Woman next episode. Um, I Have Nothing became yet another hit, uh, peaking at number 4 on the Billboard Hot 100 and being certified platinum by RIAA. Uh, the song also became a hit on the Billboard Hot R&B singles chart with a number 4 peak and a number 1 peak on the Billboard uh, Adult Contemporary Chart. Uh, so, I mean, you know, uh, a lot of uh, songs by Whitney Houston, they are they are something that you always, not always, but most of the time would hear on the radio. So, there you go, that's our musical artist of the day or showcasing her song, one of her songs. I have nothing. <laughs> It's kind of funny when when I say the title, you know, it kind of sounds like I don't have anything to tell you guys. Anyways, word of the day we have inherent right there. Um, it's an adjective and it means existing in someone or something as a permanent and inseparable element, quality or attribute or innate. You know? um, inherent, so if you want to use this word as uh, in a sentence, I have an example right over there, which is a factual sentence, by the way. I didn't make that up. Uh, my brother actually has a dog. He just got a dog recently. Uh, my brother shows his inherent love for his dog, Jace, and that's, that's the real name of his dog. His dog, Jace, by greatly taking care of him. And yes, I did say he's greatly taking care of him because he even wakes up really early to, uh, you know, to walk him. And make sure he's okay. So yeah, there you go. So my brother, he shows his inherent love for Jace. And last part of our uh, show today, we have the tech trivia, and we're gonna be talking about auto correcting. Uh, you may have experienced that when you're typing in the iPad that uh, Discovery uh, provided to you. Um, I'm not sure if I turned that off. I don't think I did, but some of these things. 
will be uh, auto um, corrected, you know. But the first auto corrected word was the the. <laughs> well, yeah, a lot of people when they type really fast, uh, you know, they would make a they would press a different letter first, and this is what it kind of looked like T H T E H. But they were trying to actually, you know, type the. Uh, Hachimovich crafted a script which would fix this spelling error when you press the left arrow key and F3 simultaneously. Um, so, autocorrect turned to be a very powerful feature in smart devices and PCs now on computers, you know. When you type fast, uh, mistakes are bound to happen and instead of pressing backspace or stopping when you type, uh, you can just keep going, you know. But of course, it's still better to learn how to spell correctly. Um, if now I'm gonna tie it to one of the questions we had uh, in in our knickknack no, I think it was knickknack no. Uh, if you remember, I know one of our students will remember this because it was it, it was her or or either, right right there. There you go. Um, it was her who answered it, and the question was, what was the most pressed key in the keyboard? And the correct answer, which she got correctly, by the way, was spacebar. But the options were spacebar and backspace. Now, you would think that backspace would be pressed a lot of times too, because uh, if people are typing fast and they're prone to making or typing uh, or making mistakes in typing, then they're gonna have to press ba backspace a lot too, right? But of course, with the um, with the technology of um, autocorrect sometimes you don't even have to press backspace because it will correct itself automatically you know so you just just keep on typing but spacebar however you have to press spacebar every word because you don't want your words to be all connected together so yeah there you go well i, I don't know just an additional keyboard trivia for us tech trivia right there and that is the end of our show today, guys. Hope you like it. Hope you learned something new. I've been stuttering and uh, been mispronouncing a lot of words. I do apologize, guys. But uh, still, don't forget to leave your thoughts about the topics we discuss in the comment section below. And uh, quick recap, we got very specific observances today. Black Cat, number two, pencil, uh, thrift shops, thrift stores, you know, again, which my wife's favorite shop <laughs> that she likes to go to and uh we got we talked about a woodstock concert uh mr de niro mr sean penn and our disney animal the black panther and so on and so forth thank you guys uh, i'll see you tomorrow with ian well not with ian but in zoom i guess with ian because uh it's joe who's helping ian on the daily show on his daily show episode now so Alrighty guys, I had fun. I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.